Well, good evening, Northside. Uh, so glad that you chose to gather with us on this Good Friday uh, service. And um, this would be a very special time for us and hopefully a very special time for you as a family as we're going to look back to what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us. But we're also going to take some time uh, to celebrate communion and to observe communion together. Uh, so we'll walk, all, we'll walk through all that together. Um, but I want you to think about that word good or that phrase Good Friday for a moment because if you think about back to that night, the, the beatings, the, the torture, the betrayal, the cross, uh, none of that at the time seemed good. Um, well, now we know looking back that the end result was very good, but um, during that time for his followers, it, it seemed anything but good. They lost a friend, they lost a mentor, they lost a leader. Uh, they, they almost had felt like everything they'd worked for the, for the past three years was, was gone. It, it was over. And so for them, it wasn't a good Friday. Matter of fact, it was a very scary time. It was a very um, time of uncertainty for them. Um, and we're going to pick up in, in the book of Matthew chapter 27. And this is going to be at the very end um, of the cross. And this one it says here in Matthew chapter 27, verses 50 through 51. It says, When Jesus has cried out again in a loud voice, he yielded or he gave up his spirit. I think it's very important to remember that nobody took Jesus' life from him. He willingly laid it down. He gave it up uh, for us. So it says he gave up his spirit. And at that moment, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked and the rocks were split. Now, the death of Jesus and his upcoming resurrection promised us a couple things. Uh, the first thing that it promised us was it promised us freedom from the bondage of sin. Um, because of the death of Jesus, we no longer have to be bound to our sin. We are no longer shackled to our sin. Because of his death and his resurrection, we can have freedom and we can have forgiveness from our sin. Uh, sins can shackle us so easily. Um, but because of what Jesus did on a cross, we're allowed that freedom, okay? We're allowed that, that forgiveness of sin that we all so desperately need. So not only does it promise freedom from um, the bondage and the shackles of sin, but it also promised us access to God. Um, and, and this is, to me, the greatest thing about our salvation. It isn't the fact, you know, that, um, but it's simply the fact that that we have access to God. When it talked about here, the veil being torn in two, up until this point for a follower of God, uh, for them to be able to communicate with God, for them to have their sins atoned for, they had to go through a, a, an intermediate um, between them and God. The high priest would go into the Holy of Holies and he would make a sacrifice. He would speak on behalf of the people to God. And when Jesus Christ died on a cross, it says the veil was torn in two. Now, this veil was something that separated people from the Holy of Holies. Uh, so what this symbolized was now we now have access to God. Um, and what an amazing thought that me and you today, because of the sacrifice of Jesus, we now have access uh, to God. And because of the death of Jesus, we can enter in boldly to his throne. I love what it says in Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 16, it says, Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Because of the sacrifice of Jesus, we can enter into the throne room of God boldly. We can come before God boldly um, and we can speak to him and we have direct access to God because of the sacrifice of Jesus. Let's pick back up in Matthew chapter 27, verses 55 and 56. It says, Many women were there, watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary of Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the Zebedee sons. So what we see here is you see the followers, they, they saw all this that had happened to Jesus. They, they saw his death. They saw the beatings. Um, they saw the crucifixion, and they were in mourning. They they were they were in shock. They were 
they were saddened by this. And the reason they were saddened because they didn't know in three short days he would raise victorious. Now for us, we're, we're able to, to look back and we're able to see that the death of Jesus wasn't the final, wasn't finality. Um, we're, we're able to see that three days later he rose again. But for that moment, for those followers, it's, everything seemed very, very hopeless. But we know that he defeated death. And because he defeated death, we can have hope. We can have forgiveness of our sins. We can have uh, a freedom from our, from our sins. We can have access to God and we're able to have hope. And this Sunday, we're going to talk a lot about that hope as we celebrate his resurrection this Sunday. Uh, so right now, I want to encourage you as, as we move forward in this service, um, I want to encourage you to really truly begin to, to focus in on the cross. I want you to think about the cross. I want you to think about um, all, the, all that Jesus did for you on that cross. And I'm going to pray for us right now. When I'm done praying, that our worship team is going to come and lead us in it just in one song. And, and as we sing that song, my, my prayer for you is that you are able to truly focus in on what Jesus did on the cross for us. Let's pray. Father, I, God, I'm so humbled when I think about the cross. God, I'm so humbled when I think about the fact, God, that you love me enough to send your one and only son to endure the beatings, to endure the mockings, the shame, the betrayal, the torture, to endure the cross. And you did it all for me. God, I, that, is so, that is something so difficult for me to fathom. But God, I thank you for that. God, I thank you for the cross. And God, I pray, Lord, as we move forward in the service, Lord, in just a moment as, as we observe in communion, God, I pray that we truly will be able to think back to the cross, God, and, and that we'll be humbled, God, and that we will truly stand in awe of what you did for us. Father, we love you. It's your name we pray. Amen. Oh, 
well, hopefully each of you had an opportunity to truly reflect on what Jesus Christ did on a cross uh, for you. And right now, as we transition into the Lord's Supper, I want to read a, a couple uh, passages, a couple verses of Scripture found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. It says, for, right, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So, so what is the Lord's Supper? Uh, the first thing that we see the Lord's Supper is it's, it's an act of worship. Uh, whenever we go in to take the Lord's Supper, we should partake in, in a, with an attitude of worship and, and an attitude of thanksgiving. It shouldn't be something we enter into a very, very, in a flippant manner. Uh, this isn't something we should do lightly. This is something that um, should be more than just a religious ceremony to us. Because we're literally remembering what Jesus Christ did on a cross for us. So this should be an, an opportunity for us to worship, and it should be an opportunity for us to give thanks. So uh, the first thing the Lord's Supper is, it's an act of worship. Uh, number two, it's also a reminder. I think we all would say that, that we're prone to forget, aren't we? Uh, that's why so many of us put reminders on our phones. We, we put things on, in on a calendar because we're just simply prone to forget. I know if I don't put something in, in on my calendar, it, it doesn't happen. And it's because I am prone to forget. Um, and, and I think Jesus knew that we would be prone to forget. So he gave us the Lord's Supper as a reminder of what he did on a cross for us. And I mean, let's, let's be honest. I think we all can be prone to forget uh, the cross from time to time and prone to forget what Jesus did for us. I mean, we just get caught up in life and we get caught up in in the day-to-day -day and just the grind of the day-to-day. -day. And it's very easy for us to forget. Um, but the Lord's Supper helps to serve as a reminder of what Jesus Christ did on a cross for us. But not only is it an act of worship and a reminder, it's also a statement of faith. See, when we partake in the Lord's Supper, we're making a statement about our faith. We're making and we're identifying ourselves as a follower of Jesus. We're saying that Jesus Christ has forgiven us of our sins. We're saying that we understand that Jesus died on a cross for us and we now have our sins forgiven because of that. I think that's why it's so important for only believers to take in the Lord's Supper. Um, because as, as someone who hasn't believed and put their faith in Jesus, you really have nothing to remember because the cross holds no significance to you yet. So it is a, it's a statement of faith, it is a reminder, it is an act of worship. So since the Lord's Supper is something so significant, I, I believe that it's very important that we prepare ourselves properly for it. Look what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 27 through 28. It says, Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord, Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. So it begs the question, how do we prepare ourselves then? Well, the first way we do is we do some self-examination. We need to examine our lives and our hearts to see if there's any unconfessed sin or attitudes that, that may need to be changed in our life. Basically, we look at our lives to see if there's anything that the Lord wouldn't be pleased with. We do a self-examination. And once we do that self-examination and, and the Lord brings something uh, to our mind that may need to be changed, the second thing we do is we confess our sins. 1 John 1, 9 simply says this, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So after we have... Um, after we have done a self-examination, the Lord has, has shown some areas in our life that, that needs to be changed or some areas in our life that isn't in agreement with Him. We need to confess those areas. We need to confess our sins. And number three, maybe we need to recommit. This isn't getting saved again, or, but it's just recommitting your life to Him. It's getting back into fellowship 
with him. Romans 12.1 says this, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, or in other words, in view of everything that God has done for you, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. So this idea of recommitting is saying, okay, God, I'm yours. My life is yours. Whatever you want to do, I'm yours. You you get to sit in the driver's seat of my life. I, I no longer want to steer my life, but God, I, I'm, I'm leaving that up to you. So we need to do a self-examination. We need to confess any sins, and, and maybe we need to recommit. But the fourth way that we can prepare ourselves and and this is very important, is to restore some relationships. This is so important, but many times it's often neglected, uh, mainly because we don't want to take the first step. Look what it says in Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 through 24. It says, Therefore, if you're offering your gift, as an, if you're offering your gift at the altar, and therefore remember your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. In other words, let me put it to you this way. If you know that there's an issue between you and another brother or sister in Christ, you're in conflict, and you're unwilling to reconcile, please don't take the Lord's Supper. It's so important that, that we come into it properly prepared, and if we know we have conflict uh, with somebody, and we're unwilling to make that right, um, then we probably shouldn't partake in the Lord's Supper. Um, it, it's too serious to take it in an unworthy manner. Um, but if you know, if you're sitting where you're at right now, and you know that uh, there's an issue between you and another believer, but you want to make that right, feel free to take in the Lord's Supper, and then and then make that thing right. Call them, uh, send them a message, but. Let's reconcile and restore some relationships. So we prepare ourselves by uh, taking a, just kind of a self-examination. Uh, we prepare ourselves by confessing any sin. Uh, we prepare ourselves by recommitting. And we prepare, prepare ourselves by um, restoring any relationships that need to be restored. So right now I want to give each of you an opportunity to do some self-examination. I want to give each of you an opportunity to, to examine your heart and and to do business with God as needed. Uh, so I'm going to pray right now. And as I'm praying, I'm going to ask you just to do a self-examination of your own heart and um, confess any sins that need to be confessed and, and, and just get back into fellowship with the Lord. Well, right now, as I pray, why don't you do a self-examination? Father, I, I come before you today. God, and I know in my own life, there are so many times, God, where I where I drop the ball. God, there are so many times where, where I let you down. So God, I'm asking, Lord, that you forgive me. God, forgive me of my sin, Lord, and I pray, God, that, um, God, that you will help me to be prepared. God, help me um, to have the right spirit as I enter into the Lord's Supper. God, I thank you for your cross. God, I thank you for your grace, and I thank you for your mercy. And God, I ask, Lord, that, um, that you forgive us. God, you forgive us as a people. God, and, and I pray that as we enter into this time of worship and this time of partaking of the Lord's Supper, God, that, God, that we will be clean before you. Lord, we love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, so right now we're going to take the Lord's Supper. And while this may be a little different, I'm going to ask um, whoever the head of the household is, um, I'm going to ask that, that you take the lead in, in, in the Lord's Supper here. I'm going to ask that, um, that, that, you, that you help in, in dispersing the elements and um, that you take the lead. That we're, now we're going to do this together and we're going to walk through this together. Um, first, we're going to start with the bread. So... Whatever you're using as a bread, maybe you're using a cracker or, or a piece of bread, whatever you're using, let's, we're going to start with the bread. and um, We know the bread to be a symbol of, of Christ's broken body, which was broken and bruised on the cross for us.
So right now, just take just a few moments and, and disperse the, the bread um, or disperse the crackers to, uh, to the people in your family. Right now, let, let me pray for us. Father, I, I thank you for your broken body. God, I thank you for the fact, God, that you died on a cross for our sins and your body was bruised and it was broken for us. God, thank you for the cross. Verse in, in verse 24 says this, The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And we can all take the, the element together. We'll now move on to, to the cup. We know the cup to be a symbol of the blood of Christ, that it was spilt out on the cross for us and it was used uh, and it's because of his blood that we're able to have uh, forgiveness of sin so I ask right now that you disperse the the juice element to uh, to the folks in your family the folks that are in your house as we do that uh, let me pray for us one more time father we thank you for your blood God, we thank you for the fact, God, that, that your spilt blood on the cross, God, cleanses us from our sins. God, help us to never, to never take this lightly. God, help us to always remember your broken body and your spilt blood. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Verse 25 says, In the same way after supper he took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. We can all take the element together. Well, Northside, thank you so much for joining us for our Good Friday service. And thank you so much for observing the Lord's, the Lord's table with us. Um, well, this was a little different way to do it, but I... I hope that it was a meaningful time for you and your family, and, and, I, and I pray that, that this will be something you remember for a long, long time. Let me just pray for us one last time as we close out our service. Father, we want to thank you for who you are, God, and I thank you for the cross, God, and I thank you for um, the fact that you died on a cross, God, but I thank you for the fact, God, that this isn't the end. God, I thank you for the fact that in a few short days, God, we're going to be celebrating your resurrection. God, when you died on a cross, you didn't stay dead, and we thank you for that, God. So I pray that as we go into that, Lord, that we're able to truly celebrate um, your resurrection, and we look forward, God, to what you're going to do on Easter, God, and what you're going to do on resurrection today, on resurrection day. Lord, we love you. Thank you for this time we had to gather as a church family, the opportunity we had, God, just to partake in communion. Lord, and I pray that, um, Lord, I pray you give us just a great, great day on Easter, God, as we remember what you did on a cross for us, and then as we celebrate your resurrection. It's your name that we pray. Amen. Well, I'd encourage you to make sure you join us uh, this Sunday for Easter. The cross wasn't the final. Um, in, in three short days, Jesus rose again, and because of his resurrection, um, we're going to see a lot of things that we have now because of his resurrection. So I'm excited to celebrate his resurrection uh, together uh, here in a few short days on Easter. We'll see you then.